Hello Windy Game fans, the linear or level based 2D action platformer is a nice alternative if you want a change of pace from the interconnected world and backtracking of a metroidvania, where in addition to the 10 titles previously covered, which you can find up there, here are 10 more indie games to keep an eye on. Let's begin with Corsair's Madness, one where you play as the captain of a pirate ship who finds himself shipwrecked on a mysterious island after a mystical storm, having to use, I quote, pirate skills and ancient artifacts to rescue your lost crew members and to uncover the secrets of the island. Of course, I think that the pixel art is a highlight, and add to that a UI that is very reminiscent of NES classics and they got my attention. There will be 5 islands or biomes to explore, with upgrades for your equipment, sea combat, puzzles, hidden passages and more, looking like a very well made one of these. It does remind me of Shovel Knight to some extent, so I am interested in this. A moody but surprisingly colourful title is Somber, one where you play as a friendly but deadly creature, trying to help whoever it can and to make things right in the world. But it does appear that the creature is a little ball that does leave quite a trail behind. I think that this looks fantastic, and while the trailer primarily shows off the precision platforming portion, the deadly description does lead me to think that there will be some combat in this, making it a beautiful title to watch. A subset of the 2D action platformer are 2D Souls-like titles, and while I have covered a bunch of them already, link in the top right, another title of interest is Swords and Their Boy. Interestingly, this is a sci-fi entry which is a nice change from the grim dark and fantasy entries that we are used to, where a pair of twin AI swords that seem to be characters in themselves, compels a mortally wounded boy to wield them to complete their mission. If you're a fan of the deliberate Souls-like combat, I think that this will be a title of interest to you. Attention all military personnel, be on the lookout for the vigilante known as War Girl. Another long in development title that I have been looking forward to is War Girl, since developer Suits and Sandals did make the tremendously underrated, free, Mega Man like Chimera destroy all monster girls, where everything about this looks like a must play for fans of the genre, so certainly drop it a wish list. I like the look of Tiny Thor, which is not a surprise since it is primarily the work of Hank Nieborg, who is one of the most prolific pixel art magicians in games, where this title has you playing as a young God of Thunder as he goes on an adventure through the land. Mjolnir can be thrown and bounced off surfaces, which can then be used in both combat and puzzles, so the combination of art and gameplay in this makes it of interest to me, once again reminding me of games from my childhood. Alright, so this title might not exactly be the classic definition of an action platformer, but you can climb and jump and attack so Terror of Hemosaurus counts in my book.
It does have a lot more in common with the arcade classic Rampage, which I remember playing as a kid, where you play as a giant monster and have to smash up the city, eating humans and destroying oncoming soldiers, tanks and helicopters. I love the pixel art of this game, looking very clean, with arcadey action that looks fantastic as well, where I do wonder what the structure of the game would be and if there is any progression from level to level. I have a little bit of a surprise for you in Grand Exile, since it comes to us from a two-person indie developer in Japan and thus makes genres and inspirations quite seamlessly. It does have a two protagonist set up in the melee brawler princess and a sorceress companion with vastly different playstyles as well. The melee combat does take inspiration from fighting games and the ranged combat looks more like a shoot em up where this trailer does tease some additional playable characters as well. It mixes settings and genres, so you're just as likely to be punching dragons as you are shooting at robots, where this is very anime as well. The pixel art here is fantastic, being what I would describe as Japanese style pixel art where you can see the difference as compared to the other games on this list making it of interest. Let's move into the top 3 with Kitsune Tales, a 2D platformer that is very similar to Mario World where you have a variety of different characters and abilities. The developer did release a new trailer that shows off the impressive voice acting and world building, so I'll leave you to them. Hi, I'm Yuzu and I'm a Kitsune. Since I became a messenger of the goddess Inari, I've had some wild adventures. No story would be complete without Kiri. She's my best friend, and we've known each other since we were little. But lately, she's been acting a little strange. Hey, Yuzu! I've been thinking about you and me, and... Uh, you know what? Uh, it can wait. Let's go for a run instead. She's gotten even weirder ever since I met Akko, the village healer. Akko is amazing, and she's always suggesting fun stuff to do together. Hey, Yuzu. It's been a while. You should be my partner at tonight's harvest dance. We'll be the cutest couple there. And don't worry. I'll try not to step on your tail. She also introduced me to the village elder, who thinks he's really funny. Miss Yuzu, it's so nice to hear you'll be accompanying Akko to the dance. Just be aware, it won't be a <laughs> foxtrot dance. I also met a grumpy samurai ghost at a haunted mansion. A kitsune. Your kind plagues me even in death. You love the cat merchant with all his puns. I think he's perfectly adorable. Yeah, it's been years since I've been in a damp cave or a dungeon, but I'm not one to refuse the call of destiny and profit. And I've run into some old friends like Erin. Kiri's uncle trains her too. My brother may indulge you, Kiri, but I will not. Do it again with proper form this time. Ah! 
Ah! My form? Nothing I do is ever good enough for him. I actually really like your form. I, I mean, I think your form is excellent. He just wants you to be the very best. That's all. Things got a little crazy at the harvest dance. It was great dancing with Akko. But when Kiri showed up and wanted to dance with me too, things got really confusing. Well, I gotta go now, but I'll tell you lots more later. So don't worry, cause I'll be back in two shakes of a tail. At this point in time, I am very confident in developer The Behemoth since they have so many excellent titles under their belt, including Castle Crashers, Battle Block Theatre and Pit People, with their next game revisiting an old friend in Alien Hominid Invasion. The key personnel from this developer have a history of making flash games on places like Newgrounds, where the original Alien Hominid was released in 2002, and this pseudo-sequel or reimagination looks to carry on that legacy. This is a run-and-gun action platformer that follows in the footsteps of games like Metal Slug, but is combined with the signature art style of a behemoth game as well, and the sense of humour from this team. It looks absolutely fantastic, so here's hoping that it releases sooner rather than later. One of the best looking action platformers to cross my radar in recent memory is Everblade, where the developer did reach out via email and I knew I had to show it off. While well, it does appear to be set in quite a classic dark fantasy world filled with skeletons, bats and evil sorcerers, I think that the game looks fantastic, with a nice variety of abilities centred around the Eversword as well. There are puzzles and even interesting looking sections like surfing on lava, so it does check many of the boxes that I look for, taking the number one spot. For more action platformers, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.